I think it's really important that people just are aware that this exists, uh, that social media and the internet has facilitated access to children that didn't exist before. You know, previously I guess all you needed to worry about was just making sure your kids were safe while they were playing in the park. But now, you know, they're not, there is concern about their safety even within their own house, at their friends' places, at schools, wherever they take their mobile device now, they are accessible. Carly was groomed online by an internet predator who had over 200 fake profiles he was using to lure young people. He used his own son uh, to um, be the profile of, of a young boy and proceeded to establish a relationship with her online over an 18 month period. Um, and you know, went to an awful lot of trouble to manipulate and deceive. And basically we were no match for a criminal like this. Unfortunately, convinced Carly to meet him alone um, and lured her to her death in 2007. 20 years ago, well 1996, uh, my husband and my daughter, she was seven at the time, or just about to turn seven, went to New Zealand on a holiday with his, to, to visit my husband's father and the wider family. And uh, we were very close. His father was very special to all of us. It turns out that um, Alex Melville Johnston um, was, a, was a sex offender. He was actually a pedophile. Um, he did offend against our daughter. She told my husband, thankfully. And, uh, and of course, we went to police, which then brought unstuck 40 years of offending against two generations of women. We've had, uh, we've had extensive and long, long relationships with victim advocacy groups. It's, it's critical. Uh, it's critical to the su success that we have as well. And they provide a support service to help people work through and in some cases disclose what's happened to them. They're, a, I guess, a less intimidating agency to go to than a law enforcement body. So we fostered and maintained really good relationships with the likes of Bravehearts and Carly Ryan. There's just so many children and, and youth out there that are so willing and open to share every aspect of their lives online, so trusting, and so therefore become um, really good targets for criminals looking to take advantage of that innocence and that trust and that's exactly what happened to Carly. When I got on the internet I looked at what happens to these kids and we know they're committing suicide. They're lying in gutters with syringes up their arms. You know they're filling up our jails, they're filling up our morgues, they're filling up our mental health institutions. You know all of this and then you look and you think but it's preventable. A lot of the kids that we deal with can't even comprehend that there would be people like this perusing the internet trying to take advantage of young people and when they, when they find out or when we help um, young people connect people with police, they're often so shocked that the person at the other end wasn't who they thought they were or they were taken advantage of in a negative way. Um, so, you know, we are also really a connector between community and police as well because often kids don't feel comfortable to come to somebody in authority. Um, so often we provide that bridge and we, we say to kids, it's okay, the police are there to help you. Um, your counsellor is there to help you. There are people in your community there that can assist you and you need to, some, all of us at some point in our lives need to reach out for that help and to take it and to try not to deal with these problems online alone. For us it's really good that somebody else is pushing the message out as well, it's not just us waving the big scary stick, they're talking about it as well. Um, they're a good port of call uh, just to have that, that conversation. It affects one in five of our children, 59,000 children every year. And this is, this is a, an absolute scourge and it's, it's a crisis facing our kids and we can prevent it if we just pull our head out of the sand and just look it in the eye and deal with it. And that's, that's what brave hearts are, are fighting to do. And you know, we've got amazing people around us like um, Task Force Argos, Queensland Police, police forces right across the country, federal police. They put themselves in the firing line every day. They go out there, they're dragging children out of these horrendous situations. It takes an enormous toll, personal toll on them, an emotional toll, but they are driven to protect our, as a community, our children. And we, we just really need to respect that and just applaud that. You know, I think we're all on mission to make sure our kids are safe. And if you are concerned that something might have happened to your child, or even if something did happen to you, uh, there are uh, 
very caring support services that can actually sit down and have those conversations without considering going to the level of a prosecution and all of that what what that might face they might help you work through the issues and take you that way and support you through that if that's the way you want to go